Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing this new DLC that came out for Five Nights at Freddy's Security Breach, which is called Ruin. Um, Five Nights at Freddy's as a whole, I've not really played much of it. To be honest, I've not played many of the series of games that they have released for Five Nights at Freddy's. I played the first one. I completed it and I was bored. I didn't find the game very fun, and I think it might just be the style of games that I actually like. Um, and this fitted into the games that I liked. Uh, so, I watched Markiplier on YouTube, came up with Recommended, and it said, Markiplier is playing Security Breach, so I thought, you know what, let's check it out. Started watching his videos on it, and I was sucked in. Honestly, I love the game so much, I love the look of it, so I bought the game. I bought the game, I knew what happened, I knew most of the story anyway, uh, but I thought, you know what, just because I know the story, it's still a different experience from playing by myself than watching someone else do it. So I played the game, and I absolutely fell in love with it for a little while. I played, like, hours of it. Uh, I find it a bit hard sometimes with the bits that I've got up to because uh, I think I am quite close to the end as I have gotten through quite a lot of it. Uh, I have not completed the game though, but I do know everything that happens um, since I've watched Markiplier watch it. I've been so busy I haven't been getting through to finishing this. I have played Ruin uh, and I loved it. Uh, and I thought it was a good DLC. There were some bits of it that I didn't like, uh, and I will explain that. Or they will probably just be a bit nitpicky and things like that. But since I don't know too much about the franchise and everything, I'm coming in from a new perspective. So I could be totally right and I could be totally wrong. So please, in the comments, just be nice and just explain things a bit better to me if you don't agree with what I'm saying, rather than just be like, you're, you're, you're an idiot sort of thing. So I do know the basics about Monty, Roxy, Freddy, and Chica, as I know a lot about those characters, um, because I've played this game, so I do genuinely know quite a bit about them from just playing the game. Um, one thing I do need to say, though, is the fact that I've never played the second, third, fourth, or Help Wanted. So I never played any of those, so there's probably quite a lot of history that I am missing. Um, so anyway, if you do like this video, please like and subscribe, uh, drop a comment down below, and uh, let me know your theories on things. So, it starts off with a girl named Cassie who gets a message from Gregory saying, I'm trapped, uh, can you please come save me, sort of thing. So, for some reason, Cassie did go down to where he was, and I personally thought that was a stupid idea. Uh, I don't know why, but I personally thought it was a stupid idea. Like, I get that it's a game, but if someone called me to an abandoned building, I would look at the building and I'd be like, hell no, I'm getting out of here. I'll get the police to deal with this. Like, she goes above and beyond the call of duty for this, and I would be like, fuck no, bro, I'm out of here. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I wouldn't go in here with a bunch of haunted animatronics that are trying to kill me. Like, I get that most of the animatronics in this game, or DLC, don't really come for you. They're not really after you. They're really after Gregory. But anyway, she gets called here. She finds this random walkie-talkie on the floor, which I'm very confused of how it even got there. Like, if... Gregory was trapped, he wouldn't just be able to go up to the top and go, okay, I'm taken by this animatronic, hold on, let me put this down here, and then you can take me away. Like, it doesn't ma it doesn't make sense to me as to why it was there in the first place. Um, anyway, so someone who is Gregory, apparently, is trapped under the raceway in a sinkhole or something which for me was already kind of sus like <laughs> like why would he be stuck down there considering all the endings he got out so the only way that i could think of it is that he got must have got captured again from another ending uh or like that ending where vanny uh 
came and got Freddy at the end after he escaped, or he was just genuinely got trapped there again, out off screen and off game. And then what also they failed to mention about this is what is the connection between Gregory and Cassie? Because I didn't see none. Like, they barely mentioned it. They made one reference in the DLC, which was a cardboard cutout of both of them together. Um, and I was just like, oh, they must have met at some point. Um, but it was off screen, which makes sense. But I would have rather if they made like a little cutscene before the game, like at least showing that they had a connection. Or like the DLC, I mean, before the DLC, like at the beginning, they showed that they had a connection. And then gave us at least a little bit of a backstory as to why, hey, I'm going to go save him. Or I have a reason to save him, rather than just being like introduced to this new character. But anyway, it does continue off from the end of Security Breach. Because it shows us the animatronics that Gregory did destroy. Uh, he did destroy Monty's legs, and Monty's legs were still gone. Uh, Chica was still flattened from the trash compactor, uh, and Freddy, in one of the endings, lost his head, which was, I think, the canon ending for this DLC, where you save uh, Vanessa via the Princess Quest games, and then you and Freddy's head and Gregory escape. Which I think is the ending towards this game, because you see a Freddy that's lying down on the floor with headless, no head, I mean, or headless. Um, and he's quite torn up, which was also a mix from another ending though. Which was uh, a bit confusing to me as to why they combined two endings together. Uh, but yeah, anyway, and then you could progress a little bit further as you get inside you find this mask, which looks exactly the same as Vanny's mask from Security Breach. Um, and that's why I thought the canon ending was to do with that, because her mask was somewhere in the actual building. Uh, and so it sounded like they put a mask in there that was different, like they had multiple different masks in there, like they put one in there that was different, or it could have been Vanny's that she, the place that she dropped it and nobody ever found it. Um, so she picks it up and then she apparently says it hurt, which would mean to me that whatever was injected into her face was connecting her to something. So. It made a lot of sense now how Vanny was supposed to get everywhere because in the virtual reality mask that you do wear you can go through objects and things like that. You can see through things and you can see like the animatronics and then you can become invisible to animatronics. So you can realistically just um, maneuver your way through which obviously would be too OP if you could keep it on the whole time but there is a catch for having this mask as you go further through the uh, the game uh, that you're playing uh, you get this entity that's in the mask um, and it pops out at different points and tries to get animatronics to come after you which with Vanny it was kinda like uh, you can just slip past the animatronics. Um, but I felt like there was some sort of understanding between that thing and Vanny because otherwise Vanny would constantly be trailed by that thing. But she could always wear the mask whenever she wanted without there being issues. Um, and so that was like, it made sense to me. But then I don't see how this thing could just, like, turn it on and off where the animatronics can all of a sudden see you. Uh, and he does try to get animatronics to come after you and things like that. So I think it starts off, you meet Chica first. Um, and after you meet Chica, I think you then see uh, Monty, I think it is. And then you see those spider things, and then you meet Roxy again. Um... 
and then you see Freddy. So for me, it was a bit disappointing in some ways because it's Five Nights at Freddy's, but yet they only put Freddy in there once for about a 10-15 minute section at most. Um, then you've got Freddy there, and then that's it. You don't see him again. And I thought Freddy was one of the main animatronics that was supposed to be there, uh, as it's Five Nights at Freddy's, not like Five Nights at every other single animatronic but Freddy. And I get that obviously the other animatronics are very important, but it's just that I felt I didn't feature Freddy enough. Like, I get that Chica, Monty, and Roxy, they are all cool animatronics when they're not trying to kill you, but I just felt like it was a bit ridiculous at some points, is all I'm trying to say. Um, but as you go further, further through, those animatronics come after you. There's a section where you have to deal with those spider things, and then you've got to get away from Chica and Roxy. Freddy, there was that one section, but there was multiple sections with that. I do feel like the ruin uh, part of this uh, game, though, was a lot easier to sneak past the animatronics than they were in Security Breach. I felt it was a lot less menacing. Uh, as I get that the animatronics are probably a lot more destroyed and things like that, so they're not like as good at catching you and things. But I do feel like that they were lacking a little bit with the chase sequences and things. So as you progress further, that thing, that entity that's in the mask comes closer and closer to you. It gets bigger and bigger, depending on what area you're in, when you try to deactivate these security things that Fre uh, Gregory tells you to do. Um, it tells you to deactivate the security thing, and every time you go close to one, this entity kept trying to get you, or get animatronics on you to stop you from, you know, continuing. Um, which made sense when once you've played the actual game it makes sense because you as you go through you think that entity is the bad guy trying to stop you from saving gregory but as you continue and you get underground to where um you're supposed to be under the roxy raceway you will see why um that it's not a bad a bad guy at all or a bad entity it's just following his orders which is to not turn the security off and the reason for that is when you go down to the bottom which is called the sinkhole you go through this door and you hear Gregory's voice and it says I'm Gregory and then this huge, thin, probably one of the scariest looking animatronics I have seen in the Five Nights at Freddy's at entirely appeared. Uh, for me, it was a bit weird for me at first because I was very confused because I was like, how can this thing mimic Gregory? So my first thought, I know it sounds really stupid, but that was Gregory. Maybe he got taken back to the, uh, the center or like you know like pizza plex or whatever like the whole five nights of freddy center big building thing whatever it is and was killed and so he was then trapped inside of an anim animatronic body which was that thing and so gregory still is still being taken over and controlled by this other entity but he was able to contact cassie um that was my first thought. Um, but then as it went on a little bit, I was like, no, 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 no. That's not right. That's not right. Uh, and then when he's about to grab you, funny enough, Roxy steps in because she was one of the security nodes that you needed to take out. And you do have a really nice moment with Roxy. And for once, it kind of was really nice for her to be actually nice to you. Rather than it being like, oh, I'm going to try and kill you. Uh, so, it was nice that you had a moment with her. Um, she remembers uh, Cassie as well. 
Which doesn't surprise me, because robots can remember anything. Um, you have a nice moment with her, but you have to deactivate her, and that's what Gregory told her to do, or the so-called Gregory. Uh, but then she somehow reactivates and comes in front of you and the Mimic. And she tries to push the Mimic back, is what it's called, I think, the Mimic, because it can mimic anything that it comes into contact with, whether it's behaviours or voices. Um, and I don't think it can mimic any words, though. I think it has to have voice samples that uh, it takes off, because you hear quite a lot of the lines that were said in Security Breach. Like, maybe the thing is mixing and matching words, as sometimes it does sound a bit like, um, you know, like, there's little cuts for a second, and then it brings in a new word, and things like that. It's just very difficult to explain with that sort of thing. Like, I knew the whole time that it was, it was just a bit sus that Gregory was asking you to risk your own life to go down there and save him. Uh, from these things. But then Roxy steps in the way, then you get a chance to run, and then for once you hear Gregory, or the supposedly real Gregory. But you don't actually know at this point, considering the whole situation. Um, and then Gregory uh, says that he's been trying to get in contact with Cassie due to something trying to make her go down to the underneath of the uh, raceway and that it was never him he never asked her to do that he's fine he's safe he's out he's long gone from that place and he's not gone back since the end of security breach uh, so he was trying to warn her that something was trying to lure her in uh, that wasn't him but by that point it was too late uh, she had already gone. Obviously, if you got in contact with her previously, and then these messages that she was getting, she could have just blocked it and ignored it. Uh, but, obviously, it wasn't that simple. Because uh, she couldn't get these messages from Gregory, which I don't actually understand why. Uh, unless the uh, Mimic was somehow blocking his signal to get to Cassie. Uh, and then that one moment that he was getting attacked by Roxy, he had to focus on that rather than communicating with Cassie. So, you then have to run out of these uh, different paths. There's two different paths. You can either go to this cardboard cutout, put the mask on, and then uh, it shows a picture of you, I think, Freddy? But he looks like a teddy bear now. And Vanessa and uh, Gregory uh, all happy and safe. Which I think is an absolute BS ending. Because I don't think that's true. I think it's the mask that's taken over and it's won. Uh, and so maybe that's what happened to Vanessa. She was living in a paradise that was in her mind while the actual entity was controlling her body, which would make sense. Uh, and that's why, at the end, that could have been the end for Cassie. Like, that could have been the entity has got her now, has found a new person to thrive through her, or talk through her. Um, and then the other ending, which was... This is the other second ending uh, where you have to turn these three cameras off or something then you see a different version of the mimic which is uh, covered in like stitches and things like that the, like different costumes that are moulded together it does look a lot less scary when you got that thing on it like those costumes because uh, you can barely see its face and body, which for me it looks much creepier when you haven't done that and you've got to face the uh, the mimic without those on. It looks so creepy. Uh, but then you go into this room and it apparently destroys the mimic, which I think isn't true. And the reason why I say that 
is because when you go and look at the suit, the mimic is not inside. He is gone. And his parts are not around anywhere. You can go through the whole map again to see if you can find him, but he's gone. He's completely gone. Then in the final ending, which is the most common one, which I've gone through the different orders, but most common one is where Gregory leads you in certain directions, and if you keep going in his directions, you get to this elevator, you have to do another security thing, and then you go in the elevator, um, and then after you get in the elevator, it just closes in time, chops the Mimic's arm off, and then what basically happens is you get this dialogue from Gregory, which was, again, a bit sus to me. At the beginning, it did sound like it was Gregory. Um, but now the Mimic has control again, there was like this little feedback thing. And then it was basically Gregory saying, it's not your fault, but we can't let anything follow. Um, and so he then drops the elevator on Cassie, with Cassie in there, uh, and just says, I'm sorry. But I don't think Gregory would have done that. If they did have a friendship... And it's just like, he, she busted her ass off to save you. Like, she did everything she could have done at that point to save your life. And then you turn around and just cut the wire and said she's dead. I don't think that was uh, Gregory at all. I think that first half was Gregory, then the second half the Mimic took over. I think what Gregory was going to do was he was going to save her and let her live and come back to the surface. And what I mean by that is the fact that I think he was going to say, don't let it follow us. And she was going to come back to the surface and leave and probably reunite with Gregory and Vanessa and Freddy. Um, but the Mimic took over and I'm guessing he cut the cable, which then caused it to fall. Because how would Gregory have any sort of control over the elevator? Like he can hack... But he would have to physically be there to drop the cable. Like, y you can't do that. Like, that's not how elevators work. And then at the e end of that, you hear a voice. Roxy's voice. Which then again was very difficult for me to understand. Because now you've got somebody in this who can mimic everything that you do. It, and Roxy was in... Uh, was in... Um, contact with the mimic it, it could have just imitated her voice and maybe the mimic isn't done with Cassie, maybe he's trying to lure her in again um, because you just hear Roxy say Cassie and then it ends I think there's going to be more games that revolve around this or the next game is going to be based around Cassie in my personal opinion like her trying to get out or maybe it was Roxy maybe it was Roxy trying to help her and Roxy opens the door or something or finds a way to save her um, and then they work together throughout the uh, next game like uh, what Gregory and Freddy did together as I feel like Roxy has a very special place for Cassie and her in her heart and it makes her look more human when uh, Roxy is around uh, Cassie. So overall I did like the DLC. I did feel like there were quite a bit of things that I didn't actually understand itself but it was genuinely a good DLC at the end of the day. Did enjoy it. There were some things that obviously didn't make full on sense to me uh, especially with the things to do with Cassie and the animatronics and things like that. Um, I did like the details of the fact that uh, they still kept uh, like the damaged uh, animatronics still there. Uh, and that was really nice that they kept those in there rather than just, uh, you know, just ignoring all of that stuff. I do feel like, though, that it didn't make sense to me though that they would still be damaged and the only reason I say that is because surely they would have gotten repaired like it was only a night and I'm guaranteeing that it didn't shut down right by the next day 
like it would have they would have seen the animatronics and surely rebuilt their bodies unless they had another accident or something like that it just doesn't make sense to me as to why um they would have still suffered the same injuries or damage to their bodies even though this was ages after the first game like way after the shutdown like way after the place shut down i would have thought that they would have still been going for like at least another two three years and surely if they wanted to do concerts with those animatronics they're not going to have them all damaged and scary looking for the kids are they like that's one thing that don't make sense but other than that, there are a few things, like I said, which I've just brought up. Like, I like the way that they've kept the damage on them to prove that it was done by Gregory. Um, but, yeah, I would have, like I said before, I would much rather them had, like, a cutscene at the beginning. Like, I've, I've said before, like, maybe not on this, but I would have thought, you know, I've said a lot about it before to my friends and things. And I was like, maybe it would be better if they made, like, a cutscene before the DLC started, like what they did with the first security breach about the animatronics and where they got up to before the game started, but maybe they should have made one about Gregory and Cassie's backstory, so you can at least understand why she would go in there to save him in the first place. Um, that would have made more sense. But anyway, guys, I, th I hope you liked my videos in general, uh, and I do hope that you like this video too. This was just discussing the Ruin DLC. If you do like, please like and subscribe. And uh, maybe I'll do some more of these sorts of videos in the future. Just discussing games and things. Uh, I do hope that you enjoyed this video. And I do hope that you go and play the DLC for yourself. Uh, I did meet the voice actors at Comic Con a few months ago. Uh, for this game, I met uh, Kellen Goth and uh, Marta. Um, and Kellen did Freddy, and uh, Marta did Roxy, Vanny, and Gregory. She did those voices for me, uh, and they were great. I've got two autographs on my wall right now from both of them, uh, and they were really nice people. Uh, so do go follow them on Instagram, and uh, continue to support their work. Thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you in my next videos. Bye-bye.